Welcome back to Nature Inc. In this edition, we see how the whole world is benefiting from the farmers who've protected the genetic diversity of the not-so-humble potato. It's estimated that an area the size of Australia will be needed to feed the world's growing population using today's agricultural methods and reliance on grain. In the quest for more land for crops, deforestation rates in sub-Saharan Africa are twice that of the rest of the world. The potato could be a solution. Kenya is becoming more more industrialized and, and the demand of chips is, is higher and higher every day. I think they have a figure of 3.5 or 4 percent growth a year. Potatoes have become one of the most popular foods in Nairobi, a city that is growing at a rate of over 5 percent a year. There is now more demand for crops to feed the urban millions. Maize is Kenya's crop of choice, but potatoes need 50% less water and they mature in three to four months, compared to six to seven months for maize. But increased demand has once again put pressure on the supply of good seed, often bought at great expense from multinational seed companies, driving up the price. Yeah, the prices are too high, too exorbitant, in fact, for the layman to afford. There is no profit. Even if you sell the cheaper, we cannot get any profit for it. The Kenya Agricultural Research Institute is now making potato seed stock available. But government seed farms can only provide 1% of the seed needed. Anlandeo believes the solution is to rely on private labs like this one that uses aeroponics, the process of growing plants in an air or mist environment without the use of soil. This new technology grows tubers in dark boxes in vitro, without the need of expensive pesticides, no use of land and very little water. It produces more tubers, 50 against 5, 10 times more. Under this condition, we have to produce these mini tubers that are the basic building stocks for any seed industry. The average yield of Kenya's potato farmers is just five tons. With an abundant supply of cheap and clean seed, it could rise to 30 to 40 tons. More food in less land, and perhaps some hope for the forest that remains standing. Modern agriculture uses 70% of the world's fresh water supply, and in many countries, the water supply is falling alarmingly. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, up to 5,000 litres of water is used to produce the daily food of one person. Water shortages in drought-prone regions like India can be devastating. And one of the crops best suited to deal with the crisis? The potato. India has already become a potato superpower, and despite being one of the country's most arid regions, Gujarat, home to Mahatma Gandhi's ashram, is also India's potato state. In 1990, Gujarat had 2,000 hectares planted with potatoes. Now, there are 40,000. India now produces twice the amount of potatoes than the US, a 650% increase since the 1970s. Its growing internal market has encouraged big business to set up shop. And no one is bigger than McCain, the largest producer of fried potatoes in the world. You know, India is just right now pregnant with a lot of opportunities. Eh? Uh, still, uh, we are in pregnancy stage, not even at uh, infancy. Eh? The fast food sector in India is growing at an extraordinary 25% per year. McCain has been able to use the biodiversity of the potato to develop the perfect variety to fit an explosive consumer demand in a very arid area. The perfect pomme frite needs a very particular potato, very large, very white and very starchy. McCain has introduced the super potato to India's farmers. This is a Santana variety uh, used for uh, processing uh, french fries. The appeal for a farmer in dry lands like this is obvious. Potatoes produce more food per unit of water than any other major crop, 
and are up to seven times more efficient in using water than cereals. So I generally ask with one question that uh, do you want to double your profit? How you can do that? You can do that only by growing potatoes. The danger of India's potato success is an over-reliance on just one or two varieties, fueled by demand from companies like McCain. There should be no need. A recent study on just two varieties of Andean potatoes uncovered over 2,000 different genes that respond to drought and heat variations. Land is the main source of both food and income for half the people in the world. Modern farming methods benefit wealthy and highly subsidized farmers who can afford fertilizers, pesticides and machinery. For the majority of small farmers in the world, including the descendants of the people who gave us the potato, the reality can be very different. We have 465 varieties planted here. This is our custom, to plant them together because potatoes are allelopathic. One variety can be vulnerable to pests or fungus or extreme cold, but the other variety will protect it and make up for it. And I think that that is an ancestral wisdom that is relevant today. In the highlands of Peru, the International Potato Center has been running an initiative to promote the characteristics of different varieties, working with the farmers that have kept alive their ancestral knowledge. There are dozens of new, strange, colorful, and healthy potatoes to be revealed. This is about marketing biodiversity. We want to look for ways of developing added value that also is a stimulus to conserving the biodiversity which they're holding and protecting for us in its original context. Native potatoes had little commercial value until 2008 when the multinational giant Frito-Lay launched a new native potato crisp. The colorful and tasty snacks have taken the market by storm. These potato varieties have tripled in price, bringing much needed income to some of the poorest regions in Latin America. We are very happy with the results. And we are determined to work harder, to become better organized. And to streamline our production line from seed generation to the market. Conserving native potato varieties is also about human survival. In 1845, a disease known as late blight destroyed Ireland's potato crop. For decades, the country had relied on just one variety of potato that had no resistance to the disease. Around one million people died. Today's modern agricultural practices are leaving humanity with the same vulnerability. The richness you find in nature is amazing. There are thousands of varieties of quinoa and potatoes, and then you go to the supermarket and get depressed because you only see one variety of each crop. Roberto Valdivia has shown that by making full use of the biodiversity of the available Andean crops, productivity can be increased by as much as 40% compared to modern monocrop practices. Around Lake Titicaca, researchers have collected more than 200 varieties of quinoa and quinoa, two types of native Andean grain rich in protein. Native camel lids like llamas and alpacas are able to withstand harsh temperatures. Making the most of nature's biodiversity was the secret formula that led to the creation of massive empires in this bleak and frigid land. We need to face the future, and we can do that by learning from the past. That doesn't mean to forget about technology, but we have to use it in conjunction with all the knowledge of the past. A shaman makes his traditional blessings to Mother Earth on the edge of Lake Titicaca. He thanks nature for all of its rich and varied crops that together provided his forebears with food security. An ancestral lesson that could be vital for the challenges we face today. Next time on Nature Inc, 
Wanted Dead or Alive. We look at the hidden costs of cutting the world's tropical forests in the name of profit. And we ask, can we make it more profitable to keep forests standing than to cut them down? <laughs>